Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We send you in peace out to the rest of you. Um, I told you what happened yesterday as an example that we're not the worst people. I explained this to you. When I said that we were not the worst and I gave you the example that I gave you, the, the events that are going on, um, I was doing this to show you that a group of people who have free access to education uh, will turn out students that will do anything and tell any lie and work at any level of industry to avoid working for the grades. Their ways of cheating and beating the system supersede the, the, I mean, the effort that they have to make to beat the system and to cheat supersedes the effort that they would have to undertake to study and learn. Yet they'll do it. Now this is when education is free. They don't have to pay for it. We have to pay for any worthwhile education in the United States. They have to pay dearly and they don't educate, they just eliminate. You pay, they pay, you pay the school, the school pays a professor, the professor sits back, tells you do this, do that, do that, and then he, you turn it in, he sits up and says not good enough, hands it back to you and says you still have enough until you do this right. It's just a process of elimination. There's nothing else to it. And so, I recorded what I recorded yesterday so that you would understand that uh, you're not the worst. We would stop thinking this, we would stop saying this, we would stop repeating this, we would stop shaming each other with this. But there's one thing about which I would say uh, that things were better, and that is that where I am now, even though these are university students, and a few of them are acting this way, I'm in an advanced class and most of the students don't act this way. As a matter of fact, after I recorded this, I went to my afternoon class, told them that I had to change the attendance policy because of a complaint, um, and they wanted to know who the student was that complained because they want to fight him. They straight told me. The only reason the student complains is because they want the degree without doing any work, and you're actually teaching. You're doing your job. There's no other reason for a student to complain. You haven't done anything wrong. Yes, there are students in here who cheated, and that's why they're here. And you called them out, and they're mad now. They know that they're going to fail, so they want to get rid of you. Because when, you, when the presentations come, and they have to show and prove, they're going to fail, and you're going to fail them. And I was like, yes, that's right, that's exactly what's going to happen. Walaikum salam. I told them, that's right, that's exactly what's going to happen. Unless they learn enough between now and then to do it. And that's 15 days from now. So what they did was uh, uh, they decided that they were going to fist fight this kid. And they don't even know. I mean, I didn't tell them who it was, but they're going to be able to guess. Because the student outright admitted to somebody else in front of them, uh, in front of one of them, that he went to complain. And when that one student that heard the confession tells the other students in the uh, same way he told me, it's over for the student that complained. They're going to beat the brakes off this kid. I think. So, this being said, um, one of the things they're definitely going to do is in the reports, they're going to go and they're going to explain to the administrator, look, we know who this kid is and complain and he's lying. He can't say anything in English, even though this is an advanced class. He doesn't have the basics and he doesn't want to fail even though he doesn't know enough to pass. That's all it is. So, that being said, um, um, one of the things I wanted to point out was this. There are guys here that don't have dads. Their dads may have died when they were young. Um, there are those who, uh, uh, there are single mothers here. The fathers, you in many cases, the, uh, the fathers died. Things like car accidents. It's not usually something violent, but things like car accidents. Um, this is part of why it is that it's how the kids are conceived even when the mothers become single mothers that does make a bit of difference and you can see that that's one of the things in which we are worse off because a lot of the kids here uh, do come from single moms but they're not children of fornication and therefore, there is still a sense of morality in the community itself. And the kids may be wild at times, but there's a likelihood that they're going to outgrow this stuff as they get older. 
and they're going to outgrow it before certain things uh, happen. Now, there are going to be some consequences that are still, uh, yeah, there are going to be some consequences that's, that still remain. I mean, if you steal in this country, you don't just go to prison. You go to prison, you get out with a prison record, and nobody gives you a job because you stole. Now, for other crimes, you go to, uh, to jail, and you, like fist fighting, you go to jail, you come out, you don't have a record. Stealing, you got a record. That's it. Because that's considered a really, really, really bad thing. The problem is they don't do this with cheating. And I think they should. Bribery as well. You go to prison, you sit there, and, you, and then you get a record. You come out, everybody knows you took a bribe. Every time you apply for a job, they find out you took a bribe, and they don't have to hire you. That should happen. If that was the case, a lot of cheating would go down. So, all this is going on. But, because it's not a perfect society. There is none. But one of the things that does make it a bit better, a bit safer of a place to live in, is that even the single mothers here are not from fornication. And there's another thing too. If a, a marriage does not work out and they split, a woman can remarry. But many men would say, look, I don't even hate you. It's not that I hate your kids, but the kids are the right of the father. If you don't let your children go and live with their dad, then what's going to happen? Salam alaikum. What's going to happen if you and I marry, you decide you won't leave one day, you're going to take my kids too. You're not going to do it. So you now let your kids live with their dad and they come visit us. That's the condition many men, and this is understood. Many men here are not against marrying single mothers, but that's usually in the case where the dad is also a single father. That's usually what, that's when they understand that. They don't have an issue. This is just expected and people realize this, they don't have an issue. There is no pressure on a single man with no children to marry single mothers. He's considered a hero if he does it. They don't necessarily have a word for simp, but they, these, there's no pressure for that. They don't look around and say, we got all these kids and need dads. That's not the case. If the father dies, the uncles, the grandfathers, other adult uh, males in the family would pitch in for this kid, generally speaking. And it's usually on the father's side that they would step in. Sometimes on the mother's side. It could be a paternal or a maternal uncle that'll step in and they'll look after this kid. they say, look, he's going to spend this amount of time each month with me. You were good to my brother. You don't have to raise uh, my nephew by yourself. You were good to him while he was alive. That's just the way that is. Her brother, the mother's brother may step in and say, yeah, he comes and stays with us for a while. Stays with us a certain length of time every month and I'm going to come in and visit. Or I'll, I'll come and stay with y'all for a certain length of time every month. What's the reason? Well, it's, it's real simple. My sister should not have to worry about her kid all the dog on time and I'm alive. But they do not have this thing where they go and they pressure guys that have never uh, had babies. If they were married and they didn't have babies, there's no pressure on them. Let alone if they were never married, which more than likely means that they're virgins and never had babies. You get up here and you go and take this single mother, especially who fornicated to have this kid. But you, you've been a virgin all this time, couldn't get none if you tried it because of the way the law works here. But now here, you, you go marry this single mother and raise her baby like it's yours. And don't ask, what about my own kids? Because that's selfish. If the women here said something like this, the men would leave the country and just marry women from other countries. It's already happening for far less than that. For a hell of a lot less, these men are already saying, no, we're not marrying, uh, we're not going to spend 50 grand to marry. A lot of these men are saying, I can look, I can stay single till I'm 30. Then the government will easily give me permission to go abroad, marry, and that's what I'm going to do. Because I'm not going to sit up here. I'd rather do that, wait till 30 to get married, be a 29-year-old virgin, than to sit up here and, and marry you. And uh, all you're going to do is sit up here and demand a hell of a lot of stuff. Or your parents will. If you don't make the heavy demands and you're a good woman, your parents will step in and raise them just to be expensive on me in the name of some arbitrary concept called family honor to impress people that are going to forget about the wedding by the time they shit out the meal that we fed them. Just so that people don't talk about us. I got to go in a mountain of debt, starting off a family like that. No, F that. I can go next door to Egypt and marry for far less, bring her here. 
Oh, and then when his sister say, I don't want an Egyptian sister-in-law, these golf cats will say, well, to hell with what you want. I'm the one that's got to get married. You don't want to, then don't come see you. I'll come back to the house and see y'all. Leave it alone. This is my life. You don't tell me what the hell to do. You're my sister, not my dad. And these are men who love their sisters, but this is how they'll talk to them. They love their sisters. They will listen to a legitimate concern, but this there's a limit. This is not one of them. You got guys 33 and ain't married because it's expensive. You know what's stopping them? They just don't have the money to get out of the country in the first place. That's all. Once they get that kind of money, they out, they gone. They ain't gonna marry somebody from outside the country. That's what's gonna happen. And sometimes these golf ladies, they start getting older. They reach 29. They realize they ain't gonna get married because it's too expensive. So then they start saying, you know what? I'll marry a non-golf era man from a poor country because I need a husband. And they do it. And, it may be, and they're ashamed to do it, but they still do it because it's even worse if they have no husband and a lot of women don't have them. But there is no pressure to sit up here and take on the responsibility of another man for yourself and let that man off scot-free. No pressure like that exists here. That is one thing that is better about here than back there. So now that I've given you this information, I hope that it helps out. Now, if you heard the last thing I said where I repeated the message that we're not the worst in the world, stop tripping and uh, go ahead and hit the share button and send to somebody else. Salam alaikum. Because I've already seen that it hasn't gotten many views. I don't care about the likes. I want the views. This needs to spread. Hurry up. Thanks a million. Salam alaikum.